Hi everybody, this is Dr. Weich Coleman. I wanted to make a cataract surgery fundamentals video. I think there's a lot of advanced content on the web. There's not that many things showing new residents how to do a basic straightforward cataract case. So here we go, I'm gonna talk through this one. I've learned a lot from a lot of people. I'm gonna to try to give credit where credit is due. A little lidocaine on the cornea to start to make sure you've got them good and numb. We'll make our paracentesis. We wanna make sure that the blade is uh, enters about a half a millimeter anterior to clear cornea. We wanna make sure that the blade is flat and the way you can tell that is by looking at the base of the blade where the blade connects to the plastic. This is sugar cane, I use sugar cane on every one. This coat, inject a little, bring the cannula across the eye so if you do have any air bubbles, you pull them back out the paracentesis wound. You want the eye firm but not hard as a rock. A firm cornea makes a more makes a higher quality main incision. Here I'm using a 2-4 keratome and I actually use it to go in and pierce the anterior capsule to get my uh, capsule rexus started. My partner Dr. Shelby taught me that. I think it's fine when you're using uh, a 2-4 keratome but if you use a 2-7-5 with a, the knife on the edges I would avoid it. So you may have noticed I go in with the Utrata's closed together, lift up and start my capsule rexus going the direction that I want it to. And then after that, it's not rocket science, just pull it where you want it to go. Remember, the capsule rexus is like shooting pool. You want to set yourself up for the next shot. So this is the chain cannula. You see we got a good fluid wave. I think the chain cannula is absolutely the best thing for hydrodissection. I go ahead and hydrosect in a few other places because you really want to get a good hydrodissection. I don't feel like it has a lot of value to me to spin the lens. A lot of people are adamant about that. I don't spin it every time, and I think I usually uh, do fine without spinning it. When you start doing femto cataract surgery with a lens X catalyst, whatever platform you've got, if you have sticky cortex to the anterior capsule leaflet, use the chain cannula. My partner also taught me that. I used a regular cannula for years, switched to the chain once we got the lens X, made my life a lot easier. So anybody who's operated with me will know that I say it's all about the crack. We want to get a good crack. Uh, if you don't get a good crack, the uh, lens extraction, especially the nucleus extraction, is probably going to torture you the rest of the case. If you do, it'll be very easy. So we're going to make a nice, straight, deep groove. And the uh, diameter of your FACO tip is just over a millimeter. Most lenses are a millimeter or five millimeters thick, so you can make three full thickness passes with impunity. You don't have to worry about anything. Okay, we're getting the conner deep. The tip of the conner has to go as deep as possible. We got a good crack on both ends. Now I'm getting the two instruments optically aligned, so I want the FACO tip sitting right on top of the conner. I make a big deal about I want to take a, a, a pure quarter. I want to take an exact quarter of the lens half. Uh, not an eighth, not a six. We want to take a quarter. So the way we do that is by getting the instruments directly on top of each other, and then the lens will crack exactly where we want it. So we're going to go and engage a good meaty portion of the nucleus, pull it up, see how the instruments are right on top of each other. And I break off an even quarter. The last chunk, this is where you really need to protect deep. Watch the posterior capsule. Dr. Flynn always told me that slow is smooth and smooth is fast. I think about that all the time. We're not rushing here at all, but this will be a fairly quick case. So the nucleus is all out. We want to move in an arc. We want to engage and then use your foot to do the work. And I always push down just a little bit. Once I go and I gauge my cortex at the anterior capsule leaflet, I, I'll peel down uh, towards the optic nerve and then bring, bring the uh, eye tip centrally as I add foot to remove the cortex. And so we want to remove it almost in quarters like we do the nucleus, ideally. Sometimes it doesn't work out that way. Uh, don't fret too much about the sub-incisional cortex. I don't worry about it too much. Somebody, some people like to get it first. That makes you more comfortable to go ahead and get it out of the way. Go for it, but I don't think it matters that much. 
when we inject ProVis for lens placement, we want to put some back in the bag. It shouldn't all go in the anterior chamber and push the capsule to leaflet back. Remember, you can't hit the posterior capsule if you're, if you're actively injecting ProVis. So when you go in and you're injecting, just keep injecting and you won't hit anything. We want to go bevel up and then rotate, and that's because you can get an endothelial tear right at the wound edge. If you don't go in start, starting out bevel up and then rotate to bevel down, I, I, I went back and forth on this a couple of times. I think bevel up is a better choice. I use the Connor. Some people use Lester or Sinsky. I use the Connor just because I want the fewest number of instruments in my set that, that I can possibly have. Simpler is better for me. Once both haptics are opening up and the caps are bag, you can go ahead and start doing your IA to get the viscoelastic out. I usually go on top of the lens first and I'll nudge the lens over out of the way, lift up a little, make sure your port is facing up towards you, up towards the cornea, and then you can remove the viscoelastic behind the lens. Finish cleaning up in the anterior chamber. I try to get it all if I can. If you don't, it's not going to be the end of the world. You might have a little pressure spike. No big deal there either. So when we hydrate the wounds, we want to take the inner edge of the wound and the outer edge of the wound, divide them in half, and your cannula goes right in the middle of those two, right between the two, the distance from the inner to the outer. True for your main wound, true for your paracentesis wound. I'll do a little dirty burp there on the main wound. So if there is a little leaflet uh, folding back out, holding the wound open, it pushes that back in and seals it. Most of the time you can get away with only hydrating half of the paracentesis wound as, as long as you get good edema coming around. I keep my cannula in hand so I can uh, check the pressure, lower it a little bit. Using the cannula and not the tip of a wax saw, I think that's better. My partner and I both use uh, intracamel antibiotics. That was what was at the end. 